Mr. Gutlip here with another algebra video for you. Today I'd like to talk to you about finding the form, uh, the equation form of a bit of information that you'll be given. You know, so you're trying to find a, uh, a quadratic function that represents some points that you've been handed. Who's walking up to you and handing points? I, I don't know, but this is what's happened to you and we need to get through it. So let's say somebody comes up to you and says, okay, how about a vertex? It's almost like a riddle, like a sphinx has approached you or something like that. How about uh, three, negative four is your vertex, and this, gra this parabola in space, whether it's going up or down, is going through a point six comma five. Okay. Well, the thing about your three forms, we have standard form, which is ax squared plus bx plus c. If I was given a, b, and c, I would just know what to do, I'd be finished. So it can't, I'm not going to use standard form. Uh, I have intercept form, your uh, y equals a times x minus p, x minus q, uh, but I don't know my intercepts, so that's not going to help. Uh, but I do have a vertex, though, so I could use the vertex form. That's y equals a times x minus h, that quantity squared, plus k. Let's go with that. So this is our general form, or the general vertex form, if you will. Uh, so let's plug in some information we know. Vertices are in the form h comma k. This point is x comma y. So if I plug these in, 5 goes over here. A we don't know. We're going to have to solve for A. And, and by the way, this may seem familiar to you if you've had Algebra 1 recently, because you may be thinking, wait, we were given like a slope and a point, and we were told to write the equation for that line in slope-intercept form. Y equals mx plus b. Well, you'd have slope, which is m and your x and your y given a point. And so you'd solve for b, and then you'd rewrite the equation uh, with y and x left as variables. We're doing the same thing now. Or maybe you were given two points. You could also have that happen. We're given two points. You have to find the slope first, then you plug one of the points in with the slope. I have a video on that. If you check the channel, there's other videos that explain how to write an equation given uh, two points or a point and slope, etc. Maybe watch one of those first, uh, or you know, pause this video, go back to that, and then come back. This might make a little more sense. Uh, but anyway, so we don't have A, but we know that X is 6. We know that H is 3 squared plus negative 4, you know, and I should have put parentheses around everything. You're probably thinking, well, it doesn't really matter for this problem. And you're right, but it's, it's cleaner if I do that. So 5 equals A. This is going to be 3 squared minus 4. I'm simplifying my signs there. So that ends up with 5 equals 9a minus 4. If I, uh, if I look at this now, I say, wait a second. This is algebra 1, or pre-algebra even. This is solving a two-step equation. Oh, simple stuff. Add 4 to both sides. 9 equals 9a. I'm going to pick these numbers at random. It worked out nicely. It might not always do that. Uh, you could end up with a fraction here for A. That's okay, too. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, so we have A equals 1. So if A equals 1, we know H and K. We can rewrite this equation using all this information. Y equals, well, it's just 1, so we don't have to write that. It's redundant. X minus 3 squared minus 4. This would be the vertex form for this given information. This generates this coordinate. And you can check it. You could plug in 6 here. If you take 6 minus 3, that's 3 squared is 9 minus 4. It gives you 5. So that did give you that point back. Uh, if I were given this information, if they said, hey, here's the intercepts, about 7 comma 0 and 3 comma 0, and it goes through a point like, uh, let's say it goes through the point 12, 15, I'd say, okay, well, I know these are the x-intercepts. I should probably use my x-intercept form, which is y equals a times x minus h, x minus, oh, yeah, not h, sorry, x minus p, x minus q. Stuck in that vertex form there. So with my intercepts, uh, I plug these in, and I have a coordinate to plug in, so I know 15 equals, I'll put parentheses this time, equals a, and then inside these parentheses, I have, uh, I know that one of my x-intercepts is 7. Oh, sorry. My x value is 12 minus 7. That's my coordinate here, or my intercept here. And then 12 and minus 3, because that's my other intercept. 
So this is your P, this is your Q, it doesn't matter which one's which, um, but they have to be the number you're subtracting from X. And then this was your X and your Y. And, you know, again, I can put parentheses around all the stuff that I probably should. Hopefully it doesn't convolute it too much for you. So you have 15 equals A times 5 times 9. So that's 15 equals A times 45. And then if we divide by 45, we get one third. So A equals one third. Oh, yeah, there's one that gives us a nice fraction of our A value. So you would rewrite this equation right here as Y equals one third times X minus seven times X minus three. And again, if you plug in 12, I mean, it should give you 15. We just did the math, but 12 minus 7 is 5. 12 minus 3 is 9. That's 45. One third of 45 is 15. This is the quadratic equation that represents this set of data that we were given. Now, if you want to convert this to standard form, that's another video that I'll have available. So look for that video on converting between the, the, stand, the uh, quadratic function forms. But let's talk about if you're given a graph. I have this graph here. I look at it, and luckily I've got a nice vertex right here, a nice clean vertex point. Uh, so I could probably find my vertex form for this equation and then modify it beyond that. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna start by finding my vertex form. It looks like I went over negative seven. So I have a vertex of negative seven, and then it goes down one, two, three. So negative seven, negative three. That's our H and our K. But I still need a point. Well, luckily this graph, goes through this point, it looks like perfectly, at negative five comma five. So I have negative five comma five as a coordinate. That's my x and y. I'm gonna go back to that vertex form. So I have five equals a times x, which is negative five in this case, minus the k value is negative seven. Now it's helpful to have these parentheses. You see, hopefully that makes a little more sense is why I put the parentheses around everything. Uh, squared and then plus negative three. So this came, in case you're wondering, like, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa where'd that come from? This is that eight, a times h minus, or I'm sorry, x minus h squared plus k. That's your vertex form for your quadratic equation. That's the general form. So I plugged in x, I plugged in h, and then I plugged in my k and my y. So Five equals, this is negative five minus negative seven, so that's plus, so that's two, so that's a times two squared, plus or minus three, we can say the same, plus negative three. So this is four, so this is five equals four a minus three, if I add three to both sides, that's eight equals four a, I divide by four, and that tells me that a equals two. So the equation that would generate this graph is y equals two times x minus negative seven. So I'm gonna make this plus seven because it was already minus in the formula or in the original form, the general form, and I'm plugging in a negative. So negative times a negative makes a positive. I mean, what I'm doing here basically is this, in case you're wondering like where that came from, negative, negative, making a positive. And then plus negative three at the end or just minus three. So y equals two parentheses x plus seven squared minus three. Let's check to see if that works. Our vertex should be negative seven, negative three. Yep, that's that point. And if we plugged in negative five, would we get five out? Well, negative five plus seven is two, two squared is four, four times two is eight, eight minus three is five. That works out. We could check this other coordinate just to make sure we're right. We got the graph, why not? Might as well do it. That's negative nine, five. If I plug in negative nine, negative nine plus seven is negative two. Negative two squared is four. Four times two is eight. Minus three gives us that five. I hope that video helps. Have a great day. Thanks.